I'm Charlie, and today we are going to be revisiting um, the project of getting these three computers up and running. So, today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be um, finishing them, um, finish up the cleaning with these magic erasers that I got. So, I got, um, I got two packs of these at the hardware store for about six dollars for both of the packs together. Each one was about three ninety nine or so. I don't know, but um, some people recommended this to me, and they say they clean very good. So I got the four times stronger Durafoam versions, and um, I'm gonna see how well they clean up with rubbing alcohol. And another thing that I'm gonna be doing is so in my um, tour of my vintage mat collection, the wood grain game room recommended that I should um, clean up the drive, the floppy drives and um, it, and um, free them up with WD-40. So I got this can of WD-40 for like six, for like three bucks, I believe. I don't know, but yeah, and I'm going to be trying to get the, all these three floppy drives working. So this one works, but it does not eject or read. Well, I don't know if it ejects or not. I'm not that sure, but the, um, these two just do not work at all. One of these does not eject and, or read, and one of these just does not take the take the um, disc. And the worst case scenario is that the drives, don't, because the, well, the drives are already broken. So worst case scenario is they just um, they just um, get, um, don't get. They just they're just still broken in the end. And um, if if I never do get to get these drives working, I'm, I'll just buy. I just buy a whole another one on eBay, which can get a bit expensive depending on what model. Um, another thing I'd like to mention is that the Wood Green Game Room also stated that um, um, about ninety percent of the drives that he's cleaned and um, um, greased up have um, wor have worked after after he is finished with them so I'm gonna be trying that today so what I, first up I'm gonna um, I'm gonna take apart one computer at a time clean, first I'm gonna clean it up and then I'm gonna open it up and get the floppy drive and I'm going to see what I can do with it so yeah let's get started So we're going to be starting with my Macintosh SE now something that's extremely infuriating is that I just for is that I was I just came back from the hardware store and I just remembered that I needed to get rubber feet for my Mac for um, some of my computers and you know, and that is very um, um, infuriating and I guess I'll get some maybe later today I don't know if I'll even do it in this video but it's not that interesting anyway but yeah so this is my the back SE so um, First up, what we're gonna do is we're going to clean up some of the black scuffs that you can see all around the computer. I tried cleaning them up with just a paper towel last time and it didn't really work. Um, so what I'm gonna be doing is using a magic eraser because LGR used one, one on one of his most recent um, restoration projects. And also in the picture, there's a picture of of some kids who scribbled crayon on a wall and I guess the line where the magic eraser was so I really hope this does work so I'm gonna be spraying this with rubbing alcohol for best results I'm not actually sure how to use these if I'm just supposed to put them in water or use rubbing alcohol but who knows we'll see I guess it's just I guess I just treat it like a normal sponge which means putting water or um, soap on it I don't know but anyway um, I got this uh, some CVS alcohol. Um, I would like to mention that there are two types of rubbing alcohols that you can get at CVS. One with a purple label, label and one with a red label. So, for so when I started doing restoration projects like this, I used the one with the red label. But then when I saw the purple label one, I just got it for some reason. I don't remember why. I thought it would be stronger. But then I but then I asked um, CVS recently which one is stronger for cleaning, and apparently the red one is stronger. So I just bought a whole bottle of red, a new whole bottle of red one red one. So if you are cleaning a computer up or anything up with um, rub, CVS rubbing alcohol, always choose the red bottle. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna try on this test area over here because that's the most noticeable area. So I'm just gonna open this up. These are odd. These are super weird. Remind me of a sponge, but like a weird sponge. Anyway, so 
I've never used one of these before. I've seen my mom use them before, but not these ones. I don't know, but... So I've sprayed it three times. Let's see what happens. Okay, I start, I'm starting to see some changes. So five. I think I'm doing something wrong. I don't know. Am I supposed to use special soap for this? I don't think these are that good. Maybe I shouldn't have bought two packs. Maybe I should have bought one pack and then see how it was. Because it is going away, but not really. I mean, it is going away, but it's taking a, a while. Did I put too much rubbing alcohol on it? Am I even supposed to put rubbing alcohol on it? Okay, so I am noticing that it's almost gone. Otherwise, that was that was a bit hard. I'm I'm starting to think if that was false advertisement on the pack. Five more sprays. Well, it works. I don't know. It's not that good. It might just be that I filled up this bottle with some of the purple label alcohol because I um, refill this bottle because it's a spray bottle with a normal bottle. Maybe it's just that. Who knows? I'm. You know what? I'm gonna um, I'm gonna continue cleaning and I'm gonna see some more results. So I'm gonna put on a time lapse. So yeah, be back in a sec. You know what? I'm a little disappointed with these magic erasers. Um, on some parts it works but barely, and on most parts, it doesn't work at all. I mean, it has taken off this black stuff, but I don't really care about that. It's not, it, I don't even, I don't know, but just this stuff isn't that good. I mean, I've, I've sprayed it a couple times, every few seconds. It doesn't really clean that well. I don't recommend it in, with cleaning. Um... But, yeah, this isn't very good. I, I mean, it does do fine on some parts, like areas like this, where you can see things and then they go away after a while. Or sometimes these black areas here. But otherwise, these black scuffs like this and this, they're, not, they're just not good. It barely does anything. Um, yeah, I, I should have gone with my instincts and... Um, only bought one pack just to see how it would do, but because but my dumb brain thought that because it was cheaper, I had to buy more of them. So um, I'm gonna see what I can do with this. If you have any recommendations, leave a comment down below. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take off the back case and then we can get the floppy drive out. So I took off the back case of the Macintosh SE. So I always mention in all my Macintosh. Um, videos where I take them apart. I always mention that what you will need is a very is a very long T15 Torx driver because there are two screws here and here that hold in the motherboard and some and the case onto the chassis and there are also two screws down here and here which are underneath the handle so that's why it'll need to be a long T15 Torx driver or you won't be able to take one of these apart. So basically um, this this particular Mac SE that I have has this expansion card in it. I don't know. I'm I'm not really sure what it is, but if you do know what it is, um, uh, tell me um, tell me down in the description. It does some. It has something to do with the hard drive in a way. I'm not sure how, but it does connect to the board. And um, otherwise, I'm not that sure what it is. But um, after you get into the case, all you need is a um, is a um, Phillips head, a standard Phillips head screwdriver. Pretty much any size will do. I recommend the larger size, sizes because they're better for this type of computer. Because most of the screws in here um, are prefer to be used with the larger one, but some of these, like these ones, prefer to be used with smaller ones. So I'm going to take a medium sized Torx, Torx screw driver and yeah. So a size 2 um, Phillips head screwdriver will do perfectly fine with this. You do need to take this out to get full access to the, um, to get more access to the computer. So, 
Um, what do I notice here with this um, card? So one thing I notice is that um, is that the um, it's being held on by it. It has this one wa rainbow wire that looks a bit modern to being an old Mac but it will just pop right out like this. This is what it looks like. So if anybody knows what this is, um, please tell me. This is basically a schematic. This is basically the schematics of it. It's got this um, circle, circular um, output and this, um, this port of some sort. I don't know what it is. I'm not too good with ports, but if you do happen to know what it is, um, leave a comment down below. It could really help me. Or what What do you think it could be? I think it's some sort of Ethernet card of some sort to be on some, so you could connect it to a server in a, um, for something. But otherwise, um, on the computer, the hard drive shows up as chip done, which isn't normal for um, a Macintosh hard drive. So I suspect that that is the um, expansion. So I'm going to remove this. This connects this big rivet cable here. This connects the um, hard drive to the board. We're not going to be looking at the hard drive today. This other cable, this rainbow cable here, um, connects the um, power to the board. You know what, what? You know what? I think I'll take the board out. So here's a tip um, to make it easier to get cables out. All you have to do is you have to match up these grooves on this side. It doesn't have grooves on the other side, but it should come out. Be careful that you don't damage anything. Uh, you know what? This doesn't work, but it's good for putting cables back on. Okay. Ugh. There's a little cl annoying clip that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. And it doesn't really give you mercy when you try to pull it out. Ugh. This is a bit hard. Um, I'm going to... I'll report back to you when I'm able to pull okay, So I got the board out. It was a bit hard because um, there's this extra board on it. So just unplug the speaker cable. Unplug the floppy drive rivet cable and this is where the and the rainbow c connector so yeah this is what my board look looks like as you can see it has been upgraded because of this area here um this is where this um rainbow rivet cable connects by the way and it appears you can just pull it out because there's this area here this expansion area over here you can pull it out so i'm going to pull it out and see what it is careful not to damage and here it is the um, board in all of its glory so I guess this is in combination with this these are related in some way I don't know what this is but um, who knows um, what actually what could this be um, any, I don't know, but this is a an upgrade from 1991. That's so th th that just means that this computer was used for quite a while, probably up until like maybe 1997 or I don't know. But this is what was in it. It has this cable that connects to this. If anybody knows what this stuff is, please leave a comment down below. I don't know what it is, but um. I don't, I'm not that sure. It's got, here's the pin number, um, some sort of, um, some sort of barcode. Um, it may look like some sort of ROM expansion of some sort, but also it could be some sort of ethernet thing. I really don't know, but I suspect it's, it's either ethernet or, um, a RAM upgrade. But anyway, so now that we got that out of the way, you have this speaker cable here. It's probably the worst cable out of all of these. So all you got to do is get a very get a size 3 Phillips head screw 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 tip. And all you got to do is I recommend um size 3 Phillips um screw screwdriver. So make sure not to lose these screws cuz I lost one of them and it was awful. Um, I really hope I do not damn it. I really hope I do not. I'm, I am not able to fix the floppy drive, but then it gets ruined. But then it gets all messed up like my other SE because that was a nightmare. I couldn't even find out what was wrong with it. But anyway. Hmm. But Apple products, as you know, do not like to be taken apart. Besides the, besides the um, models like the... Um, 
Power Mac G4 and uh, or maybe the 2000, the late 2009 MacBook. Those are some better computers for taking apart. Otherwise, most of these computers hate being taken apart. Newer iMac, iMac models, they have the screen assembly. So basically, behind the screen assembly on new iMacs, they have this. They have these screws to open, take off the chassis, so you can open it up. And on mo on on most on, on pretty much all modern iMacs, they have it glued on. So you have to use a hair dryer to get it off because the old the ones before those had these um had these magnets and they were a lot easier to take off. But probably the easiest iMac to take apart is the G5. All you need is a strange type of screw screwdriver and then you're good to go so it doesn't seem to be coming out um oh there we go it's just a little stiff so carefully lift this whole assembly out carefully okay, i'm gonna get this out of the way get this out of the way don't touch the crt because i don't want that to be damaged okay this is coming out. Oh, there we go. Careful. Easy. Easy. Oh, there's this cable here. Power cable. I guess it's the power cable for the um, for the hard drive that was connected to the analog board. And voila, we have the floppy drive assembly. We have the floppy drive and the um, the um, SCSI drive, the Apple SCSI drive. So now we can move this out of the way because we do not want to do anything else with this. And now we have this beautiful thing, dusty, I know. Should have got some compressed air of some sort, but I'm definitely um, cleaning this up. So I guess this was made in, on the 24th of August, 1988. Um, this is a more modern one than my, um, on my other SE. That, the other one I have is in 1987, and I didn't even know the SE was made and in, invented in 1987. I thought it was 88, and this is like maybe a year after my other SE. So, okay, so this is the hard drive. I do not want to touch that because that is perfectly fine. I do not want it damaged or otherwise I'm screwed and I can't use this computer. So I'm going to take these screws out. Be very careful where you put your screws because if you lose one screw, everything's all screwed up. Well, not screwed up. Makes sense. And also remember how this, um, also you should probably remember how the, um, floppy drive, what, um, how the floppy drive was placed inside of the um, this bracket. Okay, I'm getting a bit hungry. Should have probably eaten breakfast this morning, but I didn't. Really want to watch TV, but I'm stuck doing this. Ah, oh, my back. Okay, so once you got these four screws on the side, um, you should be able to um, take this out. First, however, you should probably take out this rivet cable. Um, it doesn't matter which way this rivet cable goes on back on when you're putting it back on because both sides are exactly the same. So anyway, all you have to do now is slide it out carefully if you're able to fix it in the end. So, um, now we have this beautiful thing. So many components on it. I don't even know what everything does. Um, but yeah, so right here, right here, right here, this black thing, underneath there are the um, read heads. Basically what those are is, those are the areas of the drive that read your f disc when you put it in. Well, let me get a disc as an example. Um, where's my disc? All right, just give me a sec. I need to quickly find my Test disc. disc it. So this is a um, disc that I found in my grandparents' house and um, I don't know what it goes to. I tried using it on a um, Mac, but it probably do it doesn't work because it's a 2.0 megabyte disc, and it requires a 1.4 megabyte disc to work in a Mac. So I just use this for tests, but it does, but it does go in here. So basically, what happens is you put the disc in, and then it opens up the the little thingy, and then it closes. Then it spins around, and then it goes up and down and reads everything on the, the contents of the disk. Over here is the area where you can eject it manually, but usually it should do that automatically. So, basically it does not eject the disk and also it does not read the disk. So, um, the, wood grain game the wood grain game room recommended that I cleaned up the read heads and if possible um, made the um, 
and if possible, greased up the um, some of the parts, some of the moving mechanisms. And I can see some because inside, as you can see, there's some um, bars uh, right there, right in there. You can see it there. Um, those bars basically. Um, those move the um, read head around so it can read the disc. And um, you need um, that to be able to move around so you can read all the contents of the disc. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be um, greasing up these um, two bars. And I'm also going to be cleaning up this read head with rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip. The Wood Grain Game Room said that um, it works about 90% of the time. And the worst case scenario is that the disc breaks and I just replace it. So, yeah, I'm going to get my rubbing alcohol supplies. And we're going to start cleaning up with a Q-tip. My cleaning supplies. So what I do is I have this little cup. And um, basically what I do is I have um, this little cup with rubbing alcohol in it. It's going to need a bit more than that. And I pour the rubbing alcohol in. And then I dip the Q-tip in the rubbing alcohol and then use it to clean whatever I'm cleaning. So basically this is what I do. So I take the Q-tip so I take the q -tip and here's my Q-tip. I have a whole bag of these that I got. Oh, I got the, oh. This, I got these when I lived in Switzerland. Oh, that was a while ago. So it has the um, Swiss grocery store, um, grocery store logo on it. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your Q-tip all nice clean and all um dip it in here it's gonna bubble a bit like or not i don't know it might be swiss q-tips and all you got to do is you see the reed heads you clean the bottom one and you clean the top one and just like that you have cleaned it there are these little bars that you can see in there these little silver bars those are the main parts that you want to clean while cleaning one of these and yeah so now this is all clean and as you can see, there's a bit of dirt. So I guess that might have been the problem with it not reading the discs. And also what I'm going to need is my WD-40 that I got earlier. I'm going to get that out. And all I'm going to do is get, put a generous coat of it right on this metal bar. So that's good. Put it on the other one. Over here. Okay, that was a bit much. Hope that didn't get anything. And also, I'm going to put some um, WD-40 on this spinning wheel over here that spins the disc. Basically, what that part is there, basically what that does is it clings onto this part of the back of the floppy disk and spins it around like a CD would. Excellent. Um, that should be good. Um, I'm going to clean um, everything a little more with a Q-tip, like some other areas. Um, yeah, let me just re-clean the, um, the reed heads, just in case. But be very careful, everyone, because if you do push a little, if you push too hard, it can damage, it can potentially damage it. And with the other side of the Q-tip, what you can do is you can dry it up. Don't push too hard. And there you go. Floppy um, drive all cleaned up and ready to go. I don't know if this will work or not, but if it does, I'll be incredibly impressed with how in, how this worked. So, um, I'm going to clean this up a little. Eh. Yeah, you know, I'm going to clean this up a little more with a Q-tip, and then I'm going to put it back in the computer, and then we're going to see if it works. So, I'll be back so, in a sec. computer is all reassembled except for the back case. Just in case I have to open it up again for more, just in case I need to um, um, plug in a cable that I forgot to plug in or anything like that. But I am ninety, but I'm ninety nine percent sure I did everything right. Um, so yeah, let's start it up. Three, two, one, go. Oh, I just noticed that there's an LED in the back of, on the back where the. Um, where that chip is, where that um, chip is, but will it work? Please work. I don't necessarily need the floppy to work, I just want the hard drive to work. Please say I didn't kill it. Ah, oh, thank God. All right, computer's working. Well, at least it appears to. All right, but one thing I did notice is that in the back here, yeah, there's this LED where the um, chip is. 
actually pretty interesting. I've never noticed that until now. So that's a bit weird. Does it signify that the computer is on or what? Yeah, who knows, but it's a bit weird. And again, if you do know what this is, leave a comment down below. I suspect it's an Eastern Ethernet of some sort, but who knows. It's called Chip Done. I, I tried searching up Chip Done on the internet, but with no results. So, computer seems to be working. Alright, so the computer is successfully booted up. So, I got this. Um, I'm going to use my Macintosh TV mouse because I'm too lazy to get one out of my um, drawer and undo the, um, the Velcro. And also, this one works perfectly fine. So, I'm also going to get a floppy, a floppy disk that will work with this. So, because um, the reason I need to do that is because most of my floppy disks don't work with this computer because they're 1.4 megabytes. I usually use my classic. So I think the disk I'm going to use is my After Dark disk because it's the only disk that I know that works properly because I it was brand new when I first got it. So let's try. You know what? Uh, I don't I don't really want to use this disk because what if it damages it? All right, first let's just try the test disk just to see if it will damage a disk. Because my other SE damaged a few, um, two of my system disks. One of them, um, it damaged, and the other one, it just took off the um, plate here, and I don't want that to happen. So let's see what will happen if we um, put in a disk. All right, I need to get my, got my paper clip out. Um. Paper clips are missing. Okay, it's a bit. It's a bad sign. I gotta get my paper clip first. Should be on the TV here. No, it's my SIM card remover. Um, just give me a sec. I need to find my paper clip because if it, um, because I know I do know it does not eject, but if it does, um, but I need to be able to get the disc out. So let me quickly find my paper clip. All right, got my paper clip. <sighs> Time to test. Will it work? That is the question. Is it seriously hindered? Are you kidding me? It has the same problem as my other SE now. It's just got that annoying floppy drive issue. What am I doing wrong when putting it back in the computer? Will it work? I just want to see if it will damage it, but it probably will. And it won't even work. Great. I'm gonna need to use my pliers to get this thing out. That was a fail. Thinks there's a floppy in it, but there isn't. Eject, please. Oh, it's fine. No, wait. Maybe it's just that, um, I plugged it into the top drive because, hmm, because I don't know, but maybe, you know what, I'm going to um, quickly switch the rivet cables because it's on the, um, it's it's connected to the top drive rivet, rivet cable, and um, this is the bottom drive, so let's see what happens when I change the rivet cable. Guys, so I um, switched to the, I switched to the rivet, I switched the um, port where the rivet cable is connected, and I, reboot, I rebooted the system, and the floppy drive seems to be fine now, so let's see what happens when I put a disk in. Hmm. Uh, it's th it doesn't think there's a disk in here. And never mind, it's exactly the same as it was. What happens when I put a disk in? And the same result. And it's stuck. Get out of there. Okay, 
Okay, took it. Doesn't make any noise. And it's got it stuck in there. Get out of there. This is the most annoying thing ever. I hate when this happens. It always happens to me. Nobody else. It's never happened to any other person who does this. And it always happens to me. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I know I am. And it always happens. And this always happens. The floppy drive gets hindered. And then I can't put it in a disc properly like I normally would. And it always ruins it. Always. Every single time. And it's always been with the SEs. And now it won't even come out of the darn drive. Um, you know what, I don't really want to try this on my, on either of my pluses, because if it's the same result, then I have, I have three screwed computers, because I have both my SEs screwed, and I don't want a third computer screwed. I think one is, I think two is enough. Um, if any of you know what I'm doing wrong, please l leave a comment down below, because this is the mo probably the most annoying thing that I've ever had happen with computers. The floppy drive being hindered, or like, not being aligned correctly, even though I've put everything back in the way it's supposed to be, and then it just doesn't work. And this is probably the worst case I've had, it won't even come out. And the floppy drive didn't even work in the first place, so now I don't even know what to do uh, either. So, you know what, I'm gonna do some stuff off camera, see what I can do, and, uh, but until then, I guess we'll just end the video, because I don't really want anything more to do with this, so, let's end the video. So that'll do it for today's video, um, this video was not a success, it was a fail, and, um, bought all this stuff for nothing, I bought WD-40 for nothing, I bought whatever else for nothing, magic erasers for nothing, and um, it's the same result as my other SE. Um, if you haven't seen that video, it's the floppy drive removal fail part one and two. I had to make a two part video because it was so long and I think I've spent two hours down here trying to get this thing to do something and um, it won't let me take the disc out even with pliers and it's, it works but it's just a darn disc drive doesn't work. Um, to be honest, this may not be such a bad thing for this computer because it has a hard drive in it, which means that, um, basically that means it, that it can, um, it can use Apple Talk and Apple Share to um, transfer files from my Classic to here because my Classic has some files that I, that this computer could use. So instead of having to use this computer, put files on this computer, I can just put files on the Classic and then share them with this and they both have the files. But the issue is that it's kind of inconvenient and I, I just have to pray that I won't lose my um, my a um, Apple Talk cable. I did a video about that last time. It was a success and um, I hope that um, this may not be such a bad thing. I'm gonna do some more stuff off camera, but until then, um, I guess I'm going to end the video because there's not much left to do. Um, so that'll do it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. Comment down below what you think the problem is. What am I doing wrong? Please help me. I really want this floppy drive working. This is an important computer in my collection that I need. And um, if I can't get this computer, I don't know what I can do right. And um, yeah, so that'll do it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.